Hi, I'm Pastor Dave, teaching evangelist with Lamb and Lion Ministries. You know, for the last several weeks, I have been taking the book of Daniel chapter by chapter and going deeper than what we have time for on the Christ and Prophecy TV show. Now, this week, I'll be diving into the last chapter of Daniel, chapter 12. As a reminder, chapter 10, 11, and 12 are all one unit. The angel who began speaking in chapter 10 is still speaking. So again, these are the angel's words, God's words, not Daniel's. The last chapter looks forward to the coming of the Messiah, but this chapter also deals with multiple topics. For example, verse 1 deals with the tribulation. Verse 2 and 3, uh, that deals with the timing of the resurrection. Verse 4 is the sealing of the book. Verses 5 to 7 explain the purpose of this period. Verse 8 is a request made by Daniel, and verse 9 to 13 is the response to Daniel's request. The first verse of this final chapter explains, there will be a time of distress such as never occurred since there was a nation. Now this is referring to the tribulation and what the world will experience. Now, when you stop to realize the timing of this message, Daniel was written over 500 years before Jesus came to earth. So in verse one, the term your people now, it's used twice, meaning the Jewish people. The archangel Michael would defend Israel, the Jewish people. Now, we know in the tribulation, war will break out here on earth. But war will also break out in the atmosphere. Satan and his demons who currently dwell in the atmosphere, they will do battle with Michael. The conflict between the archangel Michael and Satan and his demons will result in Satan being cast out no longer having access to heaven, and he will be confined to the earth. Satan will no longer be able to stand before the throne, before the throne of God, and accuse humans, especially believers. For this, <laughs> there will be rejoicing in heaven. Now, in the tribulation, the Antichrist will try to kill and destroy all believers, especially all the Jews. However, there will be a remnant of Jews who will survive the tribulation period. Their names will be written in the Lamb's book of life. In verse 2, the angel deals with the resurrection of two groups of humanity, the believers and the unbelievers. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake, these to everlasting life, but others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. The wording of sleeping in the dust goes back to the curse in Genesis 3. The term awake describes the resurrection as we see in Psalm 3 and Isaiah 26, as well as Jeremiah 51 and 57. People will experience one of two resurrections, one to everlasting life and one to everlasting disgrace or shame and contempt. After the great tribulation, at the return of Christ, the Old Testament saints will be raised from the dead. They are not raised at the rapture of the church, but after the tribulation. Those who die in the tribulation will also be raised at that time. Those in the church age, well, they will be raised before the tribulation at the rapture of the church. After the great tribulation, at the return of Christ, the Old Testament saints will be raised from the dead. Now, they are not raised at the rapture of the church, but before the tribulation. Those who died in the tribulation will also be raised at that time. Those in the church age will be raised before the tribulation at the rapture of the church. Revelation 20 verses 4 to 5 speaks directly about those who die during the tribulation. It says, I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God and those who had not, not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received the mark on their forehead or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This, scripture says, is the first resurrection. Now, it's important to recognize resurrection is not just a New Testament belief. Resurrection is mentioned throughout the Old Testament. For example, Genesis chapter 22 speaks to Abraham when he was willing to sacrifice Isaac and trusting, trusting that somehow God would bring his son back to life. Job 19, Isaiah 26, Hosea 13, and Psalm 16 also speak to a resurrection. This means the angel is not revealing a new concept to Daniel. What is, is new is the order in which the righteous will be raised. Paul also explains this in 1 Corinthians 15. 
In 1 Corinthians, Paul says there is an order in which resurrection of the dead will happen. Now, the word order is a military term, explaining how troops march in sequence. There's a process. One division of soldiers will follow another division of soldiers. The righteous will all not be resurrected at the same time. There's an order. Now, obviously, Jesus is the first fruit. Then the church saints of the rapture, prior to the tribulation, 1 Thessalonians 4, then the two witnesses in the middle of the tribulation, tribulation, Revelation 11. Then after the tribulation will be the Old Testament saints, Isaiah 26, and here in Daniel 12. And the tribulation saints, those who died during the tribulation. That is the first resurrection. The second resurrection is for unbelievers, Isaiah 24, Daniel 12, and Revelation 20. They will be resurrected to face the great white throne judgment. These two resurrections are separated by a thousand years. Verse 3 continues to speak of the two different groups, believers and unbelievers. Those who are wise are saved, and those who are foolish are condemned. Psalm 14 and 1 Corinthians 1. Those who are saved will shine brightly, which is a symbol of the Shekinah glory, meaning resurrection saints are going to reflect God's glory just as the face of Moses did when he came down from Mount Sinai. What a glorious picture that paints. Verse 4 is the sealing of the book. The vision that began in chapter 10 officially ends in verse 4. To seal up means to close and to keep safe. All that had been said from chapter 10 to 12 would now be closed for a period of time. Because for those living in Daniel's day, there was just too many gaps for one to have a real proper understanding. However, when the Apostle John writes the book of Revelation, that book, will fill in the missing gaps. Daniel was told to seal up his vision, whereas John was told not to seal up his vision. By sealing this book, it means the contents would be preserved. There will come a time when many will have a quest for knowledge, meaning people will seek specific knowledge, knowledge that pertains to the end times. When that time comes, which I believe is now, those seeking end times knowledge will have the visions in the book of Daniel, preserved for them. Amen. You know, when the angel gave Daniel the order to seal up the book, chapters 1 to 9 would have already been written. This means chapters 10, 11, and 12 completes the book and that Daniel would not receive any further visions. Now, verse 5 introduces two individuals. Now, Daniel sees two other angels on the other side of the river. They are witnesses to what is being said. As the book of Deuteronomy states, for a testimony to be true, it requires what? Two witnesses. In verse 6, one of the angels asks a question. How long? How long would the length of time be? How long would the persecution against Daniel's people last? Verse 7 provides the answer to that question. We're told the angel raised his right hand and his left towards heaven. And he makes an oath. Now, normally, when an oath is taken, only one hand is raised. We see that in Genesis 14 and Deuteronomy 32. But the angel raised, hands, raised both hands, which shows the seriousness of this oath. The answer to the question of how long would this terrible time last for the Jewish people? The answer is a time, times, and half a time, which is three and one half years, or the second half of the tribulation. Now, the angel then mentions the purpose of the tribulation. Uh, Psalm 2 speaks of the breaking in pieces, which is a reference to the Messiah. That prophecy reveals that the Messiah will break Gentile rule into pieces. And that fits in with the dream Nebuchadnezzar had of the ten toes and the rock smashing the toes. Uh, there is a time coming when Jerusalem, and really the rest of Israel, will be overwhelmed. They will be shattered by the forces of the Antichrist. The Jewish people then will turn to God and seek his righteousness through the Messiah. How do we know this? The post-exile prophet Zechariah said, this is the point when Israel will be regenerated. So, so once again, as in the previous two chapters, verse 8 records that Daniel hears but doesn't understand. Daniel, not understanding the angel's words, he, he asks a question. He says, what shall be the outcome of these things? 
this time he did not ask when or how long. He wanted to know what, what event will bring this final period to a close. Now notice Daniel was not given a direct response to his question. However, that answer is already given in chapter 7. The answer is the second coming of Christ. Now, to put that response in perspective, remember, Daniel is written over 500 years before Jesus' first coming. In verse 9, Daniel was instructed not to ask any more questions. He was told to go your way. Go your way, Daniel. Again, it was reemphasized that these words are to be sealed up until the end times. But to offer Daniel some reassurance, in verse 10, the angel tells him, None of the wicked will understand, but those who have insight, they will understand. And that really is the heart of why it's important to study and teach Bible prophecy. The time has come for people to have an understanding of end times. See, the reason, the reason for their knowledge will be, the Dan will be found in Daniel's book. And no one knows the day or the hour when Jesus will return, obviously. However, the tribulation, when that begins, people will have the ability to know how much time is left. Because verse 11 explains the tribulation will last seven years. And it's a period divided into two halves of 1260 days each. This means from the time the Antichrist comes and commits the abomination of desolation, it will be exactly 1260 days until the end of the tribulation. Verse 11, though, adds 30 days as an interval between the end of the tribulation and the start of the millennial. And then verse 12 adds another additional 45 days. Blessed is he who waits and arrives at the 1335 day mark, he says. So what will happen in these 75 days? Well, the abomination of desolation will be removed. The Antichrist will be thrown into the lake of fire. The false prophet will also be thrown into the lake of fire. Satan will be cast into the abyss. Gentiles, well, they will be gathered for judgment. This is the sheep and the goats judgment of Joel 3 and Matthew 25. And Old Testament and tribulation saints, they will be resurrected. It's hard to imagine what Daniel would have been thinking and feeling as this vision came to an end. However, God did not leave his servant without hope. Verse 13 confirms that no more information would be given to him. But Daniel is told he will enter rest, meaning he would die before all that had been revealed to him will come to pass. However, he has given the promise that he, he will receive his reward and that he will be resurrected and have eternal life. And to use New Testament terminology, Daniel is told, well done, good and faithful servant. You know, thanks to God's direction and Daniel's faithfulness, you and I, we have something wonderful to look forward to. Until then, we can all just say, thank you, Lord, and Maranatha, Lord Jesus. Uh -huh.